And we're excited today to initiate an exciting new series here at the Huntsman School. I am Professor Sterling Bone. I am the director of the ProSales program and a marketing faculty in the marketing strategy department here at the John M. Huntsman School of Business. And I welcome all of our students, our alumni, our, our, our guests, our staff, our faculty, all the Huntsman family. This is the inaugural Power Up Speaker Series which is designed to offer uplifting, educational, and entertaining dialogue between our experienced industry partners and our Huntsman School students. In order to help us make this important um, transition in terms of challenges that we're trying to overcome on an everyday basis, as well as help our students along their professional journey. We're excited today to, to have Anna Strauski, sales trainer and a recruiting manager at Henry Schein. And uh, Henry Schein is, is the world's largest distributor of dental equipment and supplies. And we're excited that Anna is with us. Anna is a, a graduate of the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, where she studied marketing and was an active participant in their sales team, American Marketing Association, and a variety of other events. Um, Anna has been an amazing corporate partner for our Huntsman Pro Sales program, where she's helping students launch internships and full-time opportunities within Henry Schein. Welcome, Anna, it's great to have you. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. This is wonderful. Well, thank you for the introduction. Well, thank you. And just as a reminder to our, to our audience, you have an opportunity as, as part of this live stream um, broadcast to be able to offer your comments in your chat. So please utilize the opportunity to connect with Anna and with your peers and others that will be chatting there. At the conclusion of today's event, we're going to announce some winners for those that are participating in that chat. So take advantage of the opportunity to chat. And there'll be some Q&A after Anna is able to share some remarks as a power up talk. So I'm gonna turn it over to Anna to be able to lead us through some power up talk. All right, wonderful, let's do it, thank you. So I am so happy to be here. I was just telling Sterling, I was like, I miss my interaction with, with the students and with the faculty. So I thank you for inviting me to be part of this. Um, I am gonna share my screen because I did put together a little presentation for today. Let me go ahead and share that. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get started. I'm gonna do a little bit of an overview on myself, on Shine, and then I'm really gonna talk about kind of what's going on right now and what the world is looking like and what we can do during this time. So Sterling kind of covered this. Um, I graduated from UW La Crosse. And as soon as I got done with graduating, I got the heck out of the cold because right now it's snowing there on Easter. It was snowing, I believe. And it was 80 degrees in Dallas where I now live. So still happy <laughs> with my decision. Um, so right after graduating, I moved to um, Dallas and became a field sales consultant for Henry Schein. And I did that for a year, uh, worked with different dentists, worked in grew my territory across the Metroplex, and now I am a sales training and recruiting manager. So I have a really unique opportunity in my position to be able to not only recruit and work with students to bring them on to Shine, but say, for example, I was working with some of you guys, you came on full time with Henry Shine. I would actually get to train you as well. So I would onboard you. We would have a lot of different phone calls. We would do Zoom calls like this. And then I would be one of the trainers at the national level. So we, I have an opportunity to become really, really close with the students who end up um, coming and working for Shine. So I love the position that I'm in right now and the connections that I get to make. So like I said, I wanna talk about Shine. I wanna talk about changing our perspective um, because so I'm someone who has anxiety no matter what's going on. And so you add this to it and that tends to heighten, right? And so waking up and having a lot of unknowns has been, it was extremely difficult for me. And I've been trying to do a lot of reading and a lot of changing of my mindset. And so I definitely want to talk about that today. And then also what to do during this time. I, I've totally changed my mindset that guys, we're never going to get this time again. I mean, we will never in our lifetime have this opportunity again to take advantage of growing ourselves personally and professionally, period. It will never happen again. So what are we going to do with that time? So I want to talk about some different ideas and suggestions that I have for you and some things that I've been working on. And then we'll do a Q&A. 
So about Henry Schein, we are the world's largest healthcare distributor. So I don't know if you guys have seen in the news, we've actually had a place at the table with President Trump. Um, we were one of the first distributors to come out with a COVID-19 rapid test. So with everything that's going on, they've definitely been relying a lot on, on Henry Schein because we do have our dental division, which I'm a part of, and then we also have a medical division. So they've been relying really, really heavily on our medical side. We are ranked number one in social responsibility. This is my favorite statistic about us because you have such a tremendous opportunity to give back to your local community and the world as a whole with, with Shine. So for example, I did an event called Give Kids a Smile in Dallas and we brought in a bunch of local dentists and we set up little dental operatories inside of the Dallas Mavericks Training Center and we bust in kiddos from underprivileged communities and gave them all free dentistry. We do that once a year. I was able to donate uh, $3,000 worth of supplies to a dentist who was going on a mission trip. So lots of different ways to give back. We are ranked number 238 on the Fortune 500 companies list. We've also been awarded most ethical company, and most admired company. And those aren't things that we were just awarded this past year. We've actually had those titles and, and um, those values with us now for, I believe, anywhere, some of them four years, some of them 18 years. So it's something that is really, really important to us. And you can see it in the people, in the culture of our company. So our business model is what really drew me into Henry Shine. So we sell, guys, the catalog that you get, oh my goodness, it's like this thick. When I moved to Dallas, I got a catalog in the mail that was like this thick saying, all right, here's all the products. We sell over 300,000 products. I'm like, how am I going to learn all these products? Well, you don't have to learn all those products because like I said, our business model is pretty unique. So we sell supplies, we sell equipment, the chairs, the units, the lights. You guys have ever had those big x-rays that go around, um, digital technology. So if any of you guys have ever gotten a text from your dentist or um, the different cameras, x-rays, things like that. We sell all of that. But the main thing that we focus on is this business solutions part. So dentists actually come out of dental school anywhere from $400,000 to $500,000 in debt. That's a ton of money. And they have maybe taken an accounting class, maybe an econ class, but who knows how much they're paying attention because they want to do dentistry. They don't want, they're not these big business people. And so they're expected to start a practice, have a team, have a marketing plan, know their P&L. They're expected to know all these things, right? If they want to open up their own practice, guys have never taken, they've maybe taken a class on it and who knows how much they retain. So that's where we come in and we hire field sales consultants. So that was my role, like I said, when I moved to Dallas and we have over 800 of them that go into dental practices and we sit down and we form business relationships with our doctors. We teach them how to decrease their overhead, taking a look at their P&L. We set them up with CPAs. We help them come up with marketing plans. We, oh gosh, we've done, we have so many different things and so many things that I had a chance to do to really help these doctors. Our goal is to increase their production, right? And so it works if I say, hey, doctor, let me help you with X, Y, and Z business related. And in return, you buy your supplies, your equipment, your technology from Shine because the Amazons and the Darby's and the Safco's, these are all dental um, specific internet companies. They're not sitting down and having business conversations with their doctors. They're not gonna be there when a doctor is calling saying, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. Like for example, right now with, with COVID, what do I do with my team? Amazon's not answering those calls and sitting down and having conversations with them about it. Darby's not reaching out to them saying, this is the best protocol for infection control and how you can market your practice when you get back up and running. We are. And so that's why in return, you, we, we would like you to buy your supplies, your equipment, your technology from us. So that's why I chose Shine and why I will continue to wake up and choose Shine every day because I so strongly believe in the value that we bring to our customers.
So I'm going to transition away from shine here because um, I apologize for some of you guys who may have heard that in, in any of my class talks, but I'm happy to answer any questions related to shine. But let me let me just say that I understand that this is hard. Um, I have talked to so many students and I actually had to be the one to call students and tell them that we are no longer having an internship program. It is hard. And I'm sorry for you guys going through this right now, but let me tell you that no one is immune to it. Um, we've had to make some changes at our company. I've had family members who've been affected by this. I mean, no one is immune to it. And unfortunately, there really isn't anything that we can do. So I wanna make sure that we are focusing on what we can do. So my first bullet point here is control the control wall. This is my new favorite go-to saying. I am not gonna waste my time or my energy or my tears or anything on the things that are not in my control. So control the controllable over these next few weeks. I love this thing. The only thing that I can change is my attitude. Life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. What's going on with COVID-19 and having to change the classes and graduation and things like that, that that's the 10%, right? You guys have 90% where you get to figure out how the heck you want to respond to it. If you want to waste your energy and cry about it and be upset about it, you're wasting time, guys. And it stinks. And you can have those moments where you, you know, you want to curl up. My mom always says this to me. She's like, you can take one day, take one day. You can be sad about it. You can cry about it, but then you better get up the next day and you better start controlling the controllable. That's fine. Have your moment, but let's not waste too much time and energy there. And like I said at the beginning, we are never going to have this opportunity again. When in our lifetimes are we ever going to be able to say, oh my gosh, I didn't have to go to, you know, walk in person to classes or for me, you know, I just got reduced on some of my hours. So I've never had some time where I've, I've had just this extra time to grow myself personally and professionally. Like what? We are always getting pulled in 10,000 directions. I know this. I know you guys are as college students, you guys are expected to do a ton of things and get involved with stuff. So take advantage of this time. So I know this is a lot on one slide. I probably should have broken it up into two, but I can sit here and keep telling you, take advantage, take advantage, don't waste time, don't waste energy. Okay, but how the heck am I gonna do that, right? So I'm gonna share with you guys some different ideas that I've been trying to do and things that I think will really help you. So let's start with personal growth. Holy cow, you need to move your body. You need to move your body. I don't care how, but you gotta move it. Um, I just recently downloaded an app called Not My Run by Under Armour, and I have been going on runs. Sterling and I were just talking about before this, how Sterling even said, he was like, I'm working out more and I feel like I am too. I'm, I'm moving my body more than ever before and I feel good and it's affecting me mentally and physically. It's wonderful. It's so easy to curl up on the couch and stay there all day. I know, I know it is, but I cannot tell you how good I feel after my run. Like, do you see how much energy I have right now? That's because I woke up this morning and worked out. Like you have to move your body. I know gyms are closed, but you have to move your body. There's ways to do it. There are so many different apps. Um, me and my girlfriends are on a group text where we're doing, we found this workout challenge on Pinterest for 30 days. There are things out there for you guys to do. Social media cleanup. What I mean by this is go through so like I said before, I'm someone who already struggles with anxiety and sometimes social media can just increase that, right? Um, you're looking at people, you're comparing yourself to them. I would challenge all of you guys to go through your social media and anyone who, anyone you follow, like I followed all these fitness people and then I would look at them and I'm like, well, that kind of makes me feel like icky. Go through and clean up your social media pages. Anyone who doesn't make you feel good about yourself, why are you, why are you following their content? Take some time, get rid of it because it's crazy how much, even if you look at your phone, I'm sure you guys are on your phone a lot more than you think. Go check like your little settings to see how much you're actually on it. It's kind of scary. Um, small things, seeing that multiple times a day actually really, really affect your brain. So take some time to clean that up. Write cards. I just bought a stack of cards. I'm going to send it to um, some of my professors. I'm going to send them to, um, I have these uh, 
two older ladies that I just adored back in lacrosse. I'm going to send them a letter. Take some time, write some cards to people. Um, learn a new skill. So I just downloaded this whole Rosetta Stone thing and I'm going to try to learn Spanish. Why not? Like I will never have this time again. So learn a new skill. Um, I have a friend who is starting to get really into meditation, writing. Oh my gosh, one of the biggest things that I see about students graduating now and even for myself, we struggle with writing. Autocorrect is everything. And so take some time to really sharpen up on your writing skills, video editing. I mean, there's so many cool things that you guys can be taking the time to learn. And hello, YouTube, we're on it right now. You know how many videos you can look up that teach you how to do these things? Pick something. Um, behavior assessments. So I just checked the time, sorry. I wanna make sure I'm not going over. Cause I, you know me, Sterling, I could just keep going and going. Um, so, uh, Actually, the 300 things list. So I haven't done this yet. This is something that I want to do. Um, Steve Harvey, he's the host of Family Feud. I adore that man. And man, does he have a cool story. And he is so motivational. So he actually, I watched a video on YouTube of him the other day saying, write 300 things down that you want. 300 things and be really, really specific. And he says, when you hit 75, it's going to be really tough. I'm like, yeah, there's no way I can write 300 things down. Are you kidding me? And so this is the next thing on my list. I kind of want to do it this weekend. Um, I'm going to write down 300 things. And after you write all those down, wake up every single morning and read them. Every morning, take five minutes to read all of the things that you're wanting. If you want five cars, if you want kids, if you want, I mean, whatever, whatever it is you write these 300 things down and because you're training your brain to see them and think about them every single morning, he says, you start crossing them off a lot quicker than if you weren't to write those 300 things down. So I'm gonna do that this weekend. If anyone else does that this weekend, email me or sometime email me, I'm curious. Um, behavior assessments, okay, behavior assessments are my jam. The number one quality of a good leader is self-awareness. So please take a behavior assessment. There's so many free ones available, 16 Traits, uh, Strengths Quest, the Enneagram. There's so many behavior assessments. Guys, if, if you don't know how to be self-aware, you don't know how you interact and work with other people, how are you gonna be a leader one day? I mean, like you, behavior assessments. And I have a thing on it um, over in professional growth that I'll talk about. Find your outlet. So if you guys are interested, obviously you guys are interested in business, some of you guys in sales, days can be hard. I mean, that's any job. You're going to have hard days. You're going to get rejection. It's going to stink. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to go home and get upset about it? Or are you going to go to the gym? Are you going to put on a pump up song? Are you going to, for me, I went and bought a donut and put on Mamma Mia music and it made me feel way better. So you have to find your outlet. So that way you can shake it off and move on. What is that outlet? Cause now is a really, really good time to start finding that. And I will tell you this, um, a man on my team, he is in his late forties, just texted me last night, how it's been really difficult for him this week. And he was like, I need to find my outlet. He's in his forties and he hasn't found his outlet. You guys need to start thinking about this stuff now. Um, connect. We have technology to connect. So um, Zoom, FaceTime, I'm sure you guys are doing that. Keep doing that. So I'm going to quickly go over the um, professional girl side. So I am meeting up with a girlfriend tonight and we are making vision boards. So we are saving tons of pictures, tons of quotes, and I want a massive board with everything on it. And that way it's kind of like that 300 things list. Because if I keep seeing this and I'm training myself to look at this, I'm, I'm gonna start getting motivated and I'm gonna start pushing myself to start crossing some of those things off my list and off my vision board. And I don't limit your brain. Like I, for, my, uh, for my list, I put, um, I saved a picture the other day of a Porsche. And I saved a picture of a beautiful home with a front porch because I just want a front porch so stinky bad. Like, don't limit what you can do. Put everything and anything on there. Read a book on sales. I 
yes, you have your textbooks and you do the role plays and stuff, but there are some really good sales books out there, guys. Um, so I listed a few on here. Challenger Sale. We have a lot of our reps read that one. Never Split the Difference. I'm reading that one right now. It's a great book on negotiation. I have to move my face to see the other ones that I put on there. Um, oh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I, I have that over in my bookshelf over there. Um, and Spin Selling is, is another really good one. I know there's some people who are not big readers. So podcasts, I listen to a podcast. I try to every single morning um, as I'm getting ready throughout the day. I always try to put one on. So there are ones specifically for sales. And what I would encourage you guys to do right now, it kind of goes into this next part is what industry are you interested in? I know at a young age, we expect you guys to have everything all figured out at least have maybe an idea of what type of industry you're interested in, because during this time, you can start learning a lot about it. So for me, when I was in college, I didn't know, I'm like, I, I really didn't know that I wanted to do sales. I definitely didn't know that I wanted to do dental, but I knew that I wanted to do healthcare. And so I started looking up different ways that healthcare providers can be really good at marketing. Um, and that was something that I started training myself when I was younger to help me um, when I got into that field. So Think about what you're interested in over this time. Are you interested in tech, healthcare, hospitality, um, entertainment? There's so many different things. And then what I would say is go back and try to find a podcast or book specifically on that. That's also, if you're kind of iffy about it, go listen to a podcast or read a book on it. It'll tell you if it's something that you really want to do. A um, couple podcasts that I really like, uh, Victor Antonio, his are like 10 minute little helpful sales tips. Um, he talks all about why people buy things and he gets into like psychology of it. I love his podcast, How I Built This. Uh, it talks about people who have created, I mean, people, the creator of Instagram and Kate Spade and the, the person who made Cliff Bar and the app uh, Calm, they're all on here explaining where they started and how they got to where they are now. So again, a, a motivational and really interesting podcast. And then TED Talks, I'm a sucker for a good TED Talk. I love them. Um, there's some really, really good ones on there. Strengths list. This, someone, if someone does this, send me an email, please. Like, I want you to do it and send me an email because this completely changed how I interviewed with companies and how I was able to talk about myself on a professional level, because it's kind of uncomfy, right? It's kind of uncomfortable to talk about yourself sometimes. So this helped me a ton. So what I want you guys to do is take some of these behavior assessments and it'll show you some of those top strengths, some of those things about you that you're highly skilled in. Then I want you to list them, take a piece of paper, take a piece of paper and on the left side of it, I want you to write all of them down. And then on the other side of it, I want you to write down specific examples and times where you validated that strength. So anyone can tell me they're hardworking. Anyone can tell me they're self-motivated. Anyone can tell me that. I can tell you that I am brilliant with geography, but truth is I cry every time I get lost. I can tell you that stuff. And as someone who does interviews, people tell me that all the time. I want to know how. I want actual examples of when you executed that skill. So definitely take some time to do that strengths list because holy cow, I did that before an interview and it was night and day difference between before I did it and after I did it and being able to talk about myself. Create your own website. I interviewed a gal who created her own website and I was like, oh, that's the coolest thing. Um, Wix.com is free. It's super user-friendly. This is something on my list that I'm going to do during this time. I want to create my own website. Um, put your resume on it, put your experiences on there. Super, super unique. If you're looking for ways to stand out, I know a lot of students ask me that question. If you're looking for a way to stand out with an employer, making your own website for sure will make you stand out. And then a morning routine. So Again, I know very easy. Sterling, I see you unmuted. Do you want to add anything? No, no, you're doing fantastic. Finish this thought and we have some great questions coming in. Okay, okay, perfect. Keep questions coming, folks. Keep the questions. I can't wait to, to share these questions. So last thing on here is um, morning routine. So 
again, I know during this time, it is so easy to hit snooze and snooze and snooze. And I would be lying to you if I said that I did not do that when this whole quarantine thing happened. I mean, I slept and slept and slept and slept because I'm like, what am I going to do? I have no sense of urgency. I don't, it's fine. I'll just lay in bed. I'll just watch Netflix. It wasn't until about two weeks ago that I'm like, ah, this is like messing with my brain. Like my anxiety is here. I am sad. I'm not getting stuff done. I just feel icky. And so I went back to my morning routine, working out in the morning, eating breakfast, reading my daily devotional. And I cannot tell you, I don't know if you can tell the energy that I have right now, but it makes a huge difference. So start finding, start developing a morning routine and start executing on it during this time. I can promise you it's going to make a huge difference. And then last thing is, spend all your time doing these things, not these things. It's fine to do it sometimes, but guys, like I said here, we'll just say this last number six point, and then we can open it up to questions. When you guys look back five years from now, or even, you know, when you guys become a little bit older, you start having kids, or you're talking to people about what did you do during COVID-19? Are you going to say that this is what you did? Or are you going to say, I learned Spanish. I trained for a half marathon. Like, what are you going to say? Um, so definitely think about that as you wake up every morning and decide how you want your day to go. So thank you. And I'm excited for questions. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can see my face. No, that is so wonderful, Anna. And thank you so much. Uh, I'm powered up. I'm excited. And there's some questions coming in that I would love to, to, to fill. The first one comes in from Kaylee Lott who asks, are there any service ideas that you might offer to students and, and our audience to help them feel like that they can give during this time when so many are giving to help, oh, help these folks? I want to learn how to make masks. I want to learn how to make masks so bad. Um, that's a beautiful question, first of all. Thank you. Um, so I would connect. I also just connected with my local church because they do a lot of things with meals giving out meals to people during this time. Um, I know I know there's places like Walmart who are in desperate need of people to help work. So I would, I would get, if you have a creative side of you, definitely start making some PPE products. I mean, people need masks. I saw this girl, she, she made the cutest mask and she delivered them to different nursing homes. Oh, oh, this is another idea. Um, I read an article about a man who he's a DJ and these poor nursing homes, they're having to keep them all in their rooms. So what he did is he put together like an old school playlist. He called it the golden ages playlist. And he sent it to these different nursing homes so they could play it on their loudspeakers and they could try to dance and still enjoy the day. So there's a lot of really creative ways that you can, you can give back, but I would, I would reach out to, um, some of, you know, the local churches, um, any local shops that maybe need some additional help and then get creative with, with making masks or coming up with golden ages playlists to send to nursing homes. There, there's a lot. Google. That's fantastic. And you shared um, an idea of even writing cards, right? And I love oh, that. I love that, and I love that, that, that feedback or that compliment is a gift. And if you yes. have notes, to individuals just to buoy them up during this time. You, all of us know individuals that are being effective in, 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 in probably more severe ways than we are and to send them a note and to thank them or to, to express our love and appreciation. I love that idea of writing cards, something that I'm gonna try to all do. All of your grandparents, all of your grandparents today, I want you to write every single one of them a card. My mom, she bought, you know, the chicken soup for the soul books. She got one at the dollar store and she sent it to my grandma with the card. She literally called my mom crying and she was like, this made my whole day. Like their, their world, all they're doing is watching news right now. And it's, their world is just, it, it's icky. So a card to, to some of these people, man, can that go a long way? Wonderful. Thank you, Ashley, for that amazing, uh, uh, you know, for Kayla, for that amazing question. Now we're going to go on to Ashley. Um, Ashley Mori asks, um, what advice would you give, Anna, for those that who found themselves having less time during this time of social distancing, that they're maybe having less time as they're trying to adjust into 
uh, you know, online or virtual classes, how, what advice would you give those that have maybe less time? Interesting. Huh. I would love, and Sterling, maybe you can answer this a little bit more. I guess my world has been a little bit different. So I haven't seen a lot of people who have had less time. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about having more time. So um, if you feel like you're having less time, I would go back to, to the morning routine and looking at your schedule. So when I, I'll just give for an example before when I felt like I didn't have enough time, I'll give you some tips that I used to do there. Um, when you set your alarm at night, put your phone away from you because that forces you to actually get out of bed and turn it off. Um, really easy, like I said, to hit snooze right now. So before bed, do all of your prep for the next day. Um, make sure everything is charging. Make sure, you know, if you want food, meal prep, anything like that, make sure that you have all your ducks in a row before bed and then set your phone away. Wake up in the morning, do your morning routine. You will be more productive throughout the day if you have a morning routine, period. There's studies about it. The most successful people in the world have a morning routine. Um, so do that morning routine. And then I would also say block scheduling. So this is something that I recently started getting into. If you, because I was so busy, my calendar got so full at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I didn't get to this. I didn't get to that, but it's important. I really need to get to it. If you don't block it on your calendar, it ain't going to happen. So if, if you're finding that you don't have enough time, I would really recommend looking at your schedule and saying, okay, I have about 30 minutes here you know what, in my calendar right now, I'm gonna set a notification for myself that during those 30 minutes, I need to work on X, Y, and Z. So I would, I mean, look up some different articles on block scheduling. It helps me tremendously. So morning routine, block scheduling, and setting your alarm or setting your phone away from you before bed, you will get a better night's sleep and you'll actually get up earlier in the morning. Those would be my recommendations for you. Those are wonderful. And, and just a little bit of more background that came in as, as you were sharing. Uh, uh, Ashley has children at home that are doing homeschooling and, and she's trying to fit her own classes in. And Ashley, oh. I, oh. Ashley I would just share uh, that even during this, uh, this live event, I've had to send out notes to my, my kids to keep it down, right? Uh, <laughs> conduct business. But, but I think the reality is, is we all have the same amount of time and it's just embracing that time, whatever that time is. And you know, with my kids being home and going crazy with homeschooling, uh, we're just, I'm loving being more involved in their lives and just embracing that and giving up maybe some of the things that I um, would do normally in terms of spending a lot more time on a particular task uh, for work. I'm being able to embrace the opportunity to be able to take that cherished gift, which is having children at home during this time. And so so my, my advice is we're all dealing with, especially as parents, but uh, like, I love how Anna says, never before, never, ever, hopefully never, ever again, are we going to have this opportunity to have these circumstances to really embrace the time that we do have? So I'll add to that real quick. Cause I didn't, I didn't think about, I don't have kiddos at home. So thank you for, for bringing that up. And this might work. It might not. Cause like I said, I, I don't have kiddos at home. But kind of going back to that block scheduling, I would, as much as you can, try to make a routine where you know, okay, guys, at 11 o'clock, mom is gone, mom's going to shut down and we're going to go play this today, or we're going to do this today for 30 minutes. Um, so I would try to, to block schedule, but, but include your kids in that. And then they have something to look forward to where they can say, okay, like at this time, mom's going to be done. We're going to do this or have them get something ready, you know, for when you're done. So I would, I would still do that black scheduling, but in incorporate the kiddos in that somehow. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful question, Ashley. Um, next, we have a question from uh, Oscar Cambona who asks, what approach has Henry Schein taken during this time of coronavirus with their employees? And what approach are they taking during this this, this change of time? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, a lot. <laughs> um, to start off with, I mean, we have been extremely involved in finding testing for it and also the PPE. I mean, we are the world's largest healthcare distributor. So people are coming to us, dental practices, hospitals, um, you know, nursing homes, everyone is coming to us asking, 
for PPE. And we send an update three times a day. Our marketing or our merchandise team sends an update three times a day to every single one of our Henry Shine employees, letting them know what we have in stock and when things are available. Three emails a day we get because it's just, we're, it's going, it's going. Um, so we've been huge in, in that area and also in the uh, testing area. And what I will say right now is my team, combination of um, a couple others, we are actually creating a phenomenal program. It's called Practice Recovery Program. And what it is, and there's three phases of it, and we're only in phase one right now, and I just got a sneak peek of it last night. It's this calculator that we're going to be offering to all these practitioners where they can put in what their typical schedule looks like, the day they close down, the day they want to reopen, the quantity of what they do, the cost of it. And it does this massive analytic and data and shows them, okay, when you're back up and running, this is how you need to do your schedule. So on the business side of things, we're taking care of them because when these dentists and doctors go back into normal, their focus needs to be entirely on their patients and on their team because they just went through roller coaster. They don't need to be worrying about all of the business related things. Let us do that. So we've created this massive plan. Um, and like I said, I just got a sneak peek of it, but I mean, our VPs, uh, Stan Bergman, our CEO, our, all of the, our senior directors, they've all been working on it night and day night and day. Like it's disturbing how much they're working. Like I had to check in with my boss the other day to make sure he was eating. Like we are working around the clock. So we're trying to be as proactive as possible during this time, because like we keep saying, we are going to return to normal. It might not be the same normal, but we are. So let's make sure that we're prepared when you get there. So we're, we're being extremely proactive in, in that area so we can come out stronger. Wonderful. Uh our final question uh, comes from McLean Marshall, and he, he's asking, is there any advice that you might share as students are going to onboard virtually their internships or full-time opportunities as they transition into the summer and into the fall coming on with new, new employment opportunities, but doing it virtually? Any advice that you would offer them, Anna? Yeah, I would probably offer you similar advice that I would offer even if it wasn't virtual, and I don't think enough people do this, ask as many stinking questions as possible. Ask so many questions every day. Find someone, ask whoever is onboarding you, if I have a question about this, or I, I need some additional help here, who's my contact person? Like, I am shocked sometimes that I don't get that that many questions about things. They're like, oh no, I, I think I got it, which is great. But then all of a sudden I'll get a call a month later and they're like, I have no idea what I'm in for. You should have asked a question about the beginning. Um, so ask as many questions as you can. And I would also say, don't be afraid to raise your hand and volunteer for stuff. So right now you actually have a really unique opportunity where everyone's brains are kind of in different places. And this is all new to everyone. I mean, no, we're all learning this together. So if you have an idea about something or you want to, you know, raise your hand and volunteer to help with XYZ initiative, like, holy cow, do it. Because we hopefully will never be in this position again where it's so unknown. And I had an idea yesterday for a marketing campaign for Henry Shine. Um, well, Anna from Henry Schein doesn't like, no one asked me to come up with a whole national marketing campaign, but I was thinking about it yesterday and I'm like, I think this could be a really good idea. So I went to canva.com and I put together my own marketing campaign and I told my boss about it and we're sending it off to the VP of our marketing team. Like there's, there's a really cool opportunity right now for you guys to show value and your competitive advantage and you guys I mean your generation that has a brain completely different than some of the leaders of this company because you guys all grew up in a different era so if you have an idea about something do it do it and bring it bring it forward I would recommend that whether you're virtual or you know when we get back to normal raise your hand for stuff and ask as many questions as possible and reach out to people on LinkedIn too I would also say now's a really good time 
um, to connect with some people from your company on LinkedIn and say, hey, you know, I know we're going through a crazy time right now. I, I'm newer to the team. I would love to just ask you a couple of questions and, you know, partner together and, and be here for, for anything that you might need and just pick your brain. I would definitely utilize LinkedIn right now. Wonderful. Thanks, McLean, for that great question, Anna, for your wonderful response. Well, folks, uh, it's time to announce the winners uh, for uh, swag items from the Huntsman School. And our first winner is, uh, is Ashley Mori. Thank you, Ashley. And good luck with those little ones at home and, uh, yes. and uh, some swag that maybe you can share to uh, multi-generations of Aggies there. And Kaylee Lott and McLean Marshall. So congratulations to the winners of our our swag giveaway today. And let me just again thank Anna Ostrowski from Henry Schein Dental. And I would encourage you to con continue this conversation. She's invited opportunities to reach out on LinkedIn and to send her communication, especially as you bring to bring these items of, uh, of power up into your life. So take, take up those challenges and uh, certainly um, cycle back and communicate to Anna. Let me just also remind our, our audience that this will be, this is the first of the Power Up series. And we look forward to having these throughout the summer. So stay tuned to the Huntsman calendar and for future Power Up talks. Thank you, Anna, for being with us. Thank um, you. And uh, we have a virtual event coming up on May the 1st. For many of our seniors that are graduating, uh, we wanna be able to uh, fill the void of your commencement uh, postponement on May the 1st with an exciting virtual event. So stay tuned. More information will be coming out. We look forward to celebrating the achievements of our outstanding Huntsman School students. And again, thank you, Anna, for, for being here and, uh, and go Aggies. Woo! Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. <laughs>